Hey everybody, this is Kim with Big Sense. I hope everybody is doing well. Um, I did come up with a great topic, so let's hop right into it. But before we go any further, please, you know what you gotta do, hit the subscribe button. Remember, it's the only way that we're able to grow. Because keep in mind, I wanna bring in more topics, more videos um, that will make you think a little bit um, so we can continue to move on so the channel can grow. Again, as you know, sometimes sense ain't so common. And today our topic is how do you know when the spirit is at rest? One of the reasons why I came up with this topic is because due to the COVID and so many other different type of illnesses that we're dealing with um, in our community and all over the world, we have so many loved ones, friends, family that's, you know, passing away. And it's leaving a, a burden on us because, you know, we're not able to see them. We're not able to be with them, feel, touch. Um, and I want to have the opportunity to make things a little bit easier. Now, I don't want to sit here and pretend, you know, like, you know, everything is going to be okay because for each person, everybody have to go through their own struggles. But what I'm wanting to do for people is to at least give you a sense of peace. That's one thing that everybody is looking for is a sense of peace because we know that we all have to uh, cross that threshold one day. I had a personal experience when I lost a loved one and I was very close to him. As a matter of fact, I dated him for probably about five, maybe six years. And when he passed away, it was real hard for me because I, I could not understand or it was just hard to realize that I was never going to see that person again. We were very close and, he, you know, he was just like a best friend for me. But when that happened, it just kind of seemed like every day I was waking up and I was determined that I was going to find him. I, I could not accept the fact that I wasn't going to see him anymore. So that's when my journey began trying to find out how do you know when the spirit is at rest i prayed about it you know and i, I know what the church say that you know the body is laid to rest until judgment day but i just i couldn't just go off of that i felt like it, it had to be something more so i started seeking for answers well, I was on the computer playing around, looking for different books that I could read that would kind of help my thought process. And one book that I ran across is called The Other Side, Spirit Guides, and The Afterlife. And this book is by a lady by the name of Erin, E-R-I-N, and her last name is Pavlina. P-A-V-L-I-N-A. -A. And she's a medium. So I didn't really know a whole lot about mediums. But I feel like here on the earth is so much information that's out there. And I really think people are not able to answer anything without knowing a little bit of something about everything. Now I know that sounds crazy. But on the journey that I've been on. There is so much information that's out there. And a lot of times you really don't know what to listen to, um, who to trust. And I feel like a lot of times if we depend on our spirit, our spiritual man, it has a way of guiding us. Because when we come to the earth we come in with spirit guides that direct us on our path. And that was something that I learned in reading this book. 
it was great reading for me and it gave me a whole lot of peace and a lot of questions that I had was answered in this book. So it helped me to be able to look at death in a whole different perspective. And hopefully, if you decide that you want to take time out to read, um, maybe it will bring some type of comfort to you as well. But a couple of things that kind of stuck out to me like a sore thumb, what I want to talk about today, is how do you know or how do the person look in your dreams is one way of being able to tell if a person is at rest. Now, we don't know when it's our time to cross over, but it brought me peace in knowing that when I lay down and I go to sleep, I'm a dreamer, I dream. And in my dream, whenever I would see my friend, he seemed like, or not seemed like, but he was happy. He was smiling, didn't say anything to me, but I was able to read his energy and know that he was okay. And because I saw that in my dreams, it gave me a sense of peace as to, okay, He's okay, so death can't be all so bad. Because a lot of times we're being taught that once you die, you know, you lay there and we wait for judgment day. But I just couldn't wrap my head around the fact that that's the end. I, I just couldn't accept it's the end. That would be one of the biggest reasons why we would have so much fear um, when it's time for us to go on into another life because everything just seems so final. But it's not because the spirit continues to, to live and there are things that we still have to do. This is just a small puzzle um, that we're dealing with being earthbound, being here on the earth. So the next question that I have that I wanted to share with you is could it be possible for spirits to be bound to the earth you know that was a question that kind of made me curious well according to what I read in the book what she points out is <clears throat> we still have a choice in the matter you're still able to think the same way that you think here on the earth Nothing changes with that. Basically, whatever it is that you believe, it's the same thing that you take along with you. A lot of times people are not ready to cross over because we didn't learn all the information that we needed when we was here on the earth. And when you don't have all the information that's needed, you don't know what the next step is. So sometimes when our loved ones pass on, and if they don't have the information needed in order to know what to do, sometimes they'll find themselves being lost here on earth around their loved ones. And that was something that kind of puzzled me a little bit, but I didn't find it to be too surprising because if you just really think about it, we're used to the earth. We know everything about the earth and what goes on here. But going into a different life, that would be puzzling because we've never been there and we don't know what we're supposed to do. But you remember when I kind of pointed out that when we come here, we have spirit guides that help us along the way. And a lot of times our spirit guides direct us on our decisions, on what direction or what path we're supposed to take. Now, keep in mind, you still have free will to make your own decisions. They can't make you do anything, but they can direct you. Um, I know a lot of you are probably sitting there thinking, spirit guys, I mean, what all are they able to do? You know, what are the rules for the spirit guys? Well, let's talk about that. Your spirit guides are the ones that's supposed to direct you on your path. Because we had a contract 
that was the reason why we came to the earth because we're here to learn a lesson a lot of times we can keep ourselves in this sunken place where we're not able to move simply because we didn't learn the lesson that we needed in order to move forward in life so a lot of times that's our way of going around the mountain you know spinning your wheels and going nowhere because whatever the situation was you didn't learn what you needed to learn in order to move on in order to go forward because there are levels here on the earth some of us learn quicker than others let's just face it some of us it takes time and we have to go through the same lessons over and over again until we finally learn what we need to learn in order to move forward these are some things that we have to deal with and all of these things are for our growth because we're just a small part of the puzzle and we're all learning and growing together so when we kind of think about moving on to the next level I can see how that can be hard if we wasted our time here on the earth and we didn't learn what we needed to learn in order to stay forward or in order to move forward so that's the purpose in our spirit guides now the question again was how can we be stuck earthbound if we have passed on I'm not real sure about everybody, but I know a lot of people have different gifts. And with our gifts, sometimes some of us see our loved ones through dreams. Sometimes people see their loved ones just like they see us right now. Everybody have different gifts. And I'm not one to judge anybody because we all have something special that we came here to the earth to do. So with that being said, a lot of times we are able to speak to our loved ones if we see that they're in a situation that's hard for them to move on. One of the things that the book teaches is basically letting our loved ones know that everything is okay. And we release them from the earth to be able to move on. We should always tell them to, to move into the light because there's love in that light. And we're going, to be, we're going to be okay because there are still things that we need to learn here before, you know, we come to grips with it being our turn. Trust in your intuitions and your spirit guides, and they will lead you and direct you on the path that you need to go. <clears throat> Can you help a lost soul on earth to cross over? Well, actually, we just finished touching on that a little bit and we are able to help them to cross over. First of all, we always need to remember that you need to forgive yourself. You have to forgive yourself. And you have to be okay with yourself in knowing you may not have learned everything that you needed to learn. But don't be so tough on yourself. You still have the opportunity to make things right. And that gave me hope right there because a lot of times we feel like death is so final and that's not always the case. If you lived a good life here on earth, because one of the biggest pieces to the puzzle is treating people the way that you wanna be treated. A lot of times we feel like we're not responsible, but you are responsible for your actions. You are responsible for your actions and how you made people feel while you was here on the earth. But each day you wake up, you have the opportunity to clear the air in being good to people. Now, I'm not saying you have to continue to be with someone that's beating you down with their words or being ugly to you. That's not what I'm saying at all. But we can forgive people that don't know any better. Because think about it. If a person really knew that they would have to um, go through a situation again would they actually really try to hurt somebody who wants to repeat steps 
that's almost like a teacher telling you you're going to have to repeat the third grade because you didn't learn what you needed to learn. So you, you need to stay behind and you watching everyone else that started off with you move on to the next level because they got it the first time. So I don't feel like anybody would intentionally try to do harm to anyone. But we do have to keep in mind that we need to forgive them because it's just taking a little bit more time for that person to grow. We also need to keep in mind that a lot of people go through things that you may not have went through, so we still have to be patient with people. These are just a few of the life lessons that we have to learn while we're here on the earth. So when it's time for us to cross over, we can be okay with ourselves and know that we learned what was needed in order for us to be comfortable about moving on. My next question that I had is when a person dies violently, do they seek revenge? Well, I know how I am and I feel like if my life was taken quickly or suddenly and I didn't even have the opportunity to say anything to my family and friends, um, once I'm made aware that I'm no longer here, quite naturally you know you're you're going to want to go after somebody that took your life away because a lot of times we feel like our life wasn't complete but you know what there's nothing that we can do about that if that was to happen and sometimes when um spirits decide to stay around earthbound i can see them growing bitter because they're sitting back and they're watching people move forward. And again, they're just sitting there spinning their wheels because they refuse to move forward because they have pretty much made a prison for themselves in their mind. A lot of people don't realize that it starts in the mind. A lot of people here on earth, that's not spirit form, but still in the body, is living in a prison in their mind because they will not accept the fact that they can be forgiven. A lot of people don't know or realize you can be forgiven for your sins, thoughts, words, and deeds. Only thing you have to do is just ask. Once you make that small prayer and you ask your Heavenly Father, your higher power, your main source to forgive you for your thoughts and your words and your deeds and to help you help you to be in touch with your spirit guides in order to lead you in this process and help your heart so it can be more open instead of closed. Now, I know, I know a lot of us go through things and yeah, big sis, you don't understand what I've been through. You know, you're just, you know, trying to make everything sound okay and making it sound like everything is easy. But you know what? It really is that easy. Because a lot of things that happen to us, it's for us to learn from it. So you can help somebody else. Because if the Heavenly Father felt like you wasn't strong enough to handle it, you never would have went through it. So take that hurt and that pain and use it as power in order to help somebody else that's about to go through the same process that you went through. We never have to stay in our pain, and we can come out at any time. It's basically up to you. Don't hold yourself in a mental prison. Move forward. One thing about this book that I'm telling you about is called The Other Side. It really helped me. And there's so many other things that's in this book that gave me a sense of peace to know that my loved one was okay. So when I think about him now, I can't do anything but smile and say, hey, looks like I learned a new lesson and I'm able to move forward. So when it's my turn, I hope that I have the strength and the power to be okay with the process and move forward. So again, I hope you guys enjoyed this lesson. I know it can be quite hurtful and I'm so sorry for so many of you out there that's going through um, the process right now. But 
I hope in time that you will be okay and understand that um, it was great that we was able to be connected to our loved ones and they came into our lives in order to teach us something. So as always, I hope everybody have a great rest of your day. And again, this is Kim with Big Sense. Mwah. Peace.